come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a podcast that comes at you every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not. We're on uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. You can have your Alexa device call us up by simply saying, Alexa, play the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. And she'll do it. It's amazing. (laughs) Colin was whispering that. He's like, I don't want to set it off. Oh, shit. No, she activated her. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah. Alexa, stop. <laughs> She's playing right now. Let's just play our own podcast while we're recording our own podcast. Very meta. I'm down Very meta. this idea. Uh, so we sit around a bar. We watch a movie that we watched earlier tonight, and then we talk about it. And these are the internet radio superstars that are going to talk about it with you. Brandon Lutmer. <laughs> Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Sean. What Sean. did we watch tonight? Uh, 2010's My Soul to Take. I was you, you interrupted me. I was about to chastise Brandon. I'm like, you've been here seven times. <laughs> I've never know how this works. I never <laughs> Colin's right hand man like that. That's very true. You don't kick off the circle. I'm usually over there, yeah, right. sometimes there. Yeah. I know I got to move at some point, so I'm not the first person that we go to for the review at the end of the show. This is yeah, my seventh it, time it on really the show. Is, I'm really tired of following you. Yeah, you want to be known? My seventh time on the show. Still haven't ever picked a goddamn never movie. <laughs> you got to be in the inner circle. Mm-hmm. Inner circle. Oh, shit. <laughs> but we thank you for uh, filling in at the for last minute. For your service. Yep. Yes. Holly was unable <laughs> to be uh, here tonight, but she did choose next week's movie. I'm not going to tell you what it is until the end of the show. We don't even know. Colin's out. the only one who knows. That's right. Keep it a Colin likes if I were to pick secrets. a movie, it would be great. <laughs> It would be wonderful. It would be the best movie. You don't even know. It would be a superb movie. <laughs> well, what about tonight's movie? This is the question. So, wait, who uh, who directed tonight's feature film? Uh, uh, Mr. Wes Craven wrote and directed this film tonight. This is... Uh, His so Second to last film. That's right. Yeah, this is... Uh, it was, sorry, did you say what year? 2010. And slash eleven, slash depending 11, on what you look slash at. Nine, yeah, because this was uh, this movie was all over the map. IMDb really says twenty ten. The thing we watched said twenty eleven. Amazon says twenty eleven. Yeah. Amazon yeah. is wrong. You had some kind of history with this film, didn't you? Yeah. Um. This movie came out when I lived in L.A. Um. It was when it was first coming out, or when it was known before it was released. It was known as Twenty Five Eight by Wes Craven. Um. And uh, I went to a test screening of it in L.A. Uh, one day when they, you know, before they had released it and everything. Too. So your first thoughts after the test screening. First Go. thoughts after the test screening. Um, uh, the end, mostly it was about the ending because it was. Was it different than the ending we watched? Very different. Really? The opening's different. But the it end, made sense? <laughs> it made more sense. Or <laughs> but, at least, but not you complete know sense? If not, because the whole movie was kind of, a, from what I remember, a mess to begin with. Because in the screening, it felt like, because on the Blu-ray and everything, there's deleted scenes and alternate opening and endings. And for the test screening, it felt like they put every ending they had into the movie. Like, at the end, there was, I think I think this ending was there. This, maybe. Wait, wait, wait. So what they do, they played an ending, and then it was like, or it could have ended like, like, like fade, Clue? Like fade to black, and then <laughs> cut to well, another ending. There's, uh, and we'll, we'll skip right to it. There's, there's an ending in this where um, uh, there's confusion as to if they've killed the Ripper, or if, if the soul is gone, and Fang shoots Bug, like, point blank in the face, in the house, at one point. Uh, there's also an ending where um, they uh, Bug is walking down the street, and he's walking down the street with the rest of the Ripperton Seven, and they all slowly disappear. I like, feel like that like was in the trailer. Him. It might have been, but he keeps walking down the street, and he has a monologue. This is more... All the other stuff that got cut out had more to do with the 25-8 thing, because that was a big part of this. I think it was... Um, in, the, uh, in the plot of the... Like, in the plot of the movie. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're referring to it. If, if the devil's trying to get in 24-7, then we'll fight to keep him out 25-8. I hate was that. that. Was, was that even said? I hate it. No. No, not in once. In the movie? Not no. once in the movie. He said something about we're going to fight him 24-7 toward the beginning. I remember... Thinking about that because I knew the original title was right. twenty five eight. That whole element, the twenty five eight element, was more prominent in the earlier stuff, and it made more sense, or at least it fit. The movie was still a mess then, but it fit in much better than what they did with this because they're really, like I said earlier, they're really hitting it right on the nose with the whole "my soul to take" thing. 
but uh, and that was different. added. You're saying after the after the fact. Yeah, that was so in like reshoots the, and everything. All the uh, prayer, uh, um, the, the prayers that are hung up around the house. The, yeah, the, that's all. Really, that's reshoots. Reshoots. Yeah. What about like the yeah. that girl that was like so obsessed with religion? Was she in the in the first cut yeah. of this movie too? Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, most of the um, the most of the middle of the movie is like the exact same. It's just the beginning and the ending that got heavily changed between that screening and what actually came out. Because I watched this ending tonight, I'm just like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have you seen it since the test screen? Once. Okay. I think uh, I went and saw it in the theaters once when it actually came out. Just to do a comparison. Right, just to see the comparison. And then I think once on home video, just to see it again and watch everything else. And then that, that was probably like eight years ago. Uh-huh. Like really close to when it came out and then watching it tonight was the next screening of it. So I was just like, huh, that's interesting. I don't remember much about that one. <laughs> so a lot was changed mm. between that and now or huh. then anyway. Well, that's very interesting. Still a mess. Yeah. Cause I remember writing that <laughs> because in the test screen, they give you the little uh, packet at the end. And just like, what did you think about this? What does this, does this, just this, say, make this sense? is a mess. And I'm just like, and I was just like, the ending is like, why are there five endings to this movie? Like you pick one and go with it. Cause it felt like they put everything in there at that point. Because they didn't know what they wanted. Oh, so they weren't separated. It was all just one It felt thing. Yeah, it was yeah. all like all one thing at the mm-hmm. end. Like, I think there was a fade to black and then another monologue and then one more fade to black and then them walking down the street and them all disappearing and then going to crazy. All right, let me... Uh, let Craziness. Me, let, maybe we should get this off of our chest before we start talking about this movie. What, how do we feel about Wes Craven, filmmaker? One of the greats. He was one of the greats. It's fine. All right. Although lately, like... The, the recent West, West Craven we watched on the show, not a fan well, of. I'm no, just, it was I'm, not a fan of. It was a I'm checking before, like we, because I'm, I, I have a feeling how this is going to go. There was a definite <laughs> downswing at the end of the career. Yeah, I thought that toward the end, and I said this while we were watching. It's like by the end of this movie, it felt like it was written by a crazy person. It yeah. felt like it also was directed by someone who'd never done this before. It seems so inexperienced and like unintelligible. Like it's, yeah. it's hard to believe the the things that came before this, and even Scream Four after this. Like this to me, this makes Scream Four look a lot better. Actually, oh well, yeah, definitely. You know? well, <laughs> At least Scream Four is uh, coherent, more cohesive and coherent. Yeah, but than the, he this wasn't movie. a writer on that. It, I mean, no. Wes Craven. Maybe that's the problem. He did start out as a writer director. Yeah. He wrote and directed. Why well, I guess his first major commercial thing was Last House on the Left mm-hmm. yep. and The Hills Have Eyes. I think mm-hmm. both of those were his. He, he wrote, wrote the remake. And uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was mm-hmm. his N- new nightmare. There's several nightmare, others yeah. that are like his. He wrote and directed the film Shocker. Uh, yep. Well, even People Under the Stairs. Mm-hmm. So he was a writer director, yeah. I guess, for the most part. And it's his, um, what we say, like the n- late 90s stuff uh, on that we seem to think of, you know, as like the, the Scream Renaissance. That's all yeah. the like Kevin Williamson's. And the uh, what's it, Aaron Krueger's of the you know who because yeah. uh, Kit Williamson wrote uh, Cursed, mm-hmm. which yes. we did on this show. You yep. can go back and check that yes. out. Uh, we did how many screams have we done on this show? Two. We've done Scream two and two four. and Scream four. Yeah, and we did uh, the People Under the Stairs. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, have we done another Wes Craven movie? Or is that... I've never seen the People Under the Stairs. You don't. Need uh, to. Yeah, it's a spoiler alert for our episode. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about. <laughs> it. Don't worry about it. Nope. <laughs> how no. much? Are there people under the stairs? No, ba- not really. Heart- not really. Not really. They're mostly in the walls. People in the walls. <laughs> and there's a dog in the walls for uh, mo- most of the movie. Yeah. It's a dog not- chasing people through walls. You hmm. get an image yeah. in your head, people under the stairs are like, hmm, that sounds interesting, and it could be Your you know, image cool is more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whatever you're thinking, more yeah. interesting. Although I think movie. I remember liking that movie more than you guys did, so I may have been yeah. the lone defender, I think, that yeah. night of, you of may people under the stairs. But I guess, you know, um, well... Um, so Craven, I mean, I've always thought that, uh, that shocker and, and this Mm -hmm. are, uh, they stand out from his, uh, films because there's some, there's like, they share similar themes. Yes. The idea of, you haven't seen shocker. I haven't seen shocker. I know of, have you guys seen shocker? I know know of the elements of shocker that you can compare to this movie. Yeah. There are, um, the idea of souls, uh, you know, um, hopping bodies and people sharing souls and, you know, this kind of thing. There's a lot of, uh, it's also know, like, like the son and the father. Well, element. yeah, I mean, we're going to, right. <laughs> right. Well, <yeah. laughs> you got to tread lightly if you sure, haven't sure, seen sure. it. But, okay. So it does share some of these themes, but, um, 
Yeah. I, Are you worried about ruining either of these movies? <laughs> right, <for> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shocker's a weird one, too. And, I mean, this is like, this is batshit crazy. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to take the position of, I'm going to defend this movie, change my mind. Oh, God, this is one go. of the most original <laughs> now, things he's been, now, that He's been doing Wes this Craven for a couple of years now, so I'm not surprised. Done. I'm not surprised. <laughs> original does not mean good. Okay, but let's go there. there so, go. I mean, this is a, a, a guy, a filmmaker, storyteller who's working in Hollywood. And I mean, the whole thing is, is that, you know, you're trying to not repeat yourself. You're trying to come up with something that hasn't been seen before. Right. Uh, you know. I mean, did he come up with something? I mean, have you seen anything? What What is the closest I mean, analog uh, to this film? There has to be a film where, like, a killer has possessed somebody. Right? Yeah. Right? I know I, I've seen them. I just can't think of any off the top of my head. I Fallen. feel like this is just a kitchen Fallen. sink approach of taking all these things that you, elements of or horror movies, and just throwing them together in a way that doesn't make any sense. That's all this movie does. I don't know if that makes it original. Like, it, there's been killer possession movies. Yes. There's been soul jumping movies. Right. Like just even Nightmare on Elm teen. Street had soul based yeah, stuff. Sure. You know, been teen lame, slasher movies. bizarre teen rom coms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, this movie is like part Mean Girls, part <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> part and in part Scream because well, it is like a, part but, oh, a very some very specifically yeah part sure. the, <laughs> I, the antagonistic <laughs> killer's phone call to its victim like uh, we, there was a way too went on way too long in this movie too, uh, and it only happened like a oddly a couple of times mm-hmm. like it was like it's like there's seven kids right too yeah. many. That's too many There's for a story seven, like and this. There's seven, and like, like, like a, the devil's number is seven. I don't know. And like right, the Ripper in three, they could have like got away. Three with. of them get Five the phone max. call. All right. Well, what, what are we talking about here? For the folks who haven't seen this before, and I know we're jumping around, and right. I've already talked about the ending. But what's the setup for this film? What what's going on? I think we, I can do this. Oh, okay. Let's all right. Let's okay. Let's right. He's gonna. He's like, <laughs> this is all set up for him. And like, he's yeah. See, I pulled it off. I can pick a movie next time. Did you do this the last time? I think you did. Whatever movie was like, I got this. Did you do this with Lamora? Uh, no, it was a different one, but I think I fucking Never I creep. think I fucking nailed it. <laughs> All right, go for it. All right, a <laughs> uh, Barba from Law and Order SVU. Yes, multiple personalities, seven personalities. In fact, um, ended up can't control them. Kills his. I mean, we're giving everything away here. We just give yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, they know. Kills his pregnant wife in front of his daughter. Both of them end up going to. Pregnant wife's sister who works at the hospital they went to. Boom. Got it. <laughs> Flash forward to the future. Yes. There's seven other children that were born premature. It just so happened to be seven children that were born premature that night. And they all let's back up celebrate one. Ripper Day. Well, let's back up on why they celebrate Ripper Day. Because the guy who killed his wife in front of his daughter is responsible for six other murders and he's known around town at this point as the Riverton Ripper. The, the we do not see that all those murders predate this movie, which right, I think yeah. is a major problem of this movie. It is. We come into uh, Barba, uh, uh, Raul Esparza. Yeah. Uh-huh. Dr. Chilton Dr. from Dr. Hannibal. Chilton from Hannibal. everybody watch that show, right? You know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's very go good. watch that yeah. fucking show. But we come in to him realizing who he is, that he is, sure. uh, he's discovering that he is the Riverton Ripper. Because he's schizophrenic. We, yes. we think it's a mental illness or something. He has multiple personalities. Yes. And one of them is the Riverton River. Or the, he <laughs> the is Riverton possessed River. by a, a number of souls that are all talking to him in a very, yes. like, just, I mean, the out pe- of the gate, the, the, the level of intensity that this movie is just uh, like accelerating uh-huh. to like 88 miles per hour. The pacing oh, yeah. of this cold open is incomprehensible. Oh yeah. Straight up incomprehensible. It's... It is. Wow. Cause so I've many never seen anything happen. like it. Yeah. So many things. I mean, I don't know. Like I was expecting, you know, it's like within, uh, it's almost it's like, like the, the boy minutes. next door in their cold <laughs> open. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole movie, right? It really it's the is. short version of a, an entire film where like the cops are closing in on the Ripper. The Ripper's finding out who he is by, you know, having conversations with himself in the bathroom mirror. Mm-hmm. Uh, he kills his wife. But There's- it takes you the whole movie to realize that's what was happening. That's the problem is that because it throws all this stuff that, like I said, happened before this movie started. Within the first cold open, you have to hear how many weeks, months, maybe even years of history. Like that's the that's I the was, more interesting. I movie. thought before that he had just killed like another person. No, it's no, like they six said other that. people. Yeah. Why would like, they not? Okay, I don't know. Like he killed seven people, and then there's seven souls within him, yeah. and then it's seven kids born. God, so and that's the more interesting movie. Show me that movie. I kind of want to see that. I'm just. Yeah. I'm, first of all, love him as an actor. Mm-hmm. 
Let me just see a movie of him being a serial killer. Raul right. Esparza. I'll watch yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I would watch that too. Like, I mm-hmm. like watching him. Wasn't there a Ripper in Hannibal? There was a Ripper. The Chesapeake Ripper. Chesapeake Ripper, yeah. That right, was, was Hannibal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's very true. Okay. The, yeah. Um, Spoiler alert for Hannibal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we flash forward, and then now we're in current day 2011. 16 years later. Or whatever. And there's these seven children that were all born that night. And I guess it's a different... Okay, is it supposed to be a different one of his, like... Uh, he each, died. He said so, each one's a different personality. So a or different, different soul. soul. Like, when he died, a different soul went into each of the children born that night. Yeah. So of the victims. Of the... Mm-hmm. Stupid. No, no, right? of the, it feels... Well, they don't necessarily say that, but that's what it feels like. So, right? it's weird because besides, like, the main dude, the, or, there's, like, the jockey guy, the jock guy, yeah. and, like, the the nerd that we're supposed to be, like, is, the, is our hero, Bug. Yeah. Well, there's a b- couple nerds. Right. There's a blind but like, nerd. But they don't have, like, super defining... I could not make heads of tails of any Souls, right? Like, like well, they're all seven different souls that come from this. But, like, they're all, like... A lot of them are just, like, kind of the same. Mm-hmm. There's the, like, the, the blind black kid. Blind black. And the jock. Alex and Adam. Those three blend. Okay. They're all, like, the same. The and a- it's, like, well, and there was the Asian kid that got killed Jay. on the bridge at the beginning. Yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was, like... And even, like, the... Like, Brittany... Yeah. yeah, even she was just like you could, it was actually like a nice person. Like she was just like friends with with like his right. sister who was a bitch. Mm-hmm. Fang, Fang, where did Fang that nickname, yeah, where did that nickname come? Uh, the nicknames in this I movie I are wild. As, I was confused as to who they were even talking about. Yeah. I'm like, who the fuck is Fang? <laughs> and then they showed her. I'm like, is she one of the seven? Because I had forgotten who all the seven. I couldn't. That's, what, that's why seven is seven too word. many. It can't be that many. It's too uh, many to keep track of. If especially if they're going to be that indistinguishable from one another. Yeah. You know, you need to have like four really well defined characters, and that's it. The idea is that the all these seven are going to be set up. It's a horror movie, so they're going right. to eventually become victims. I mean, we're talking about kind of the mythology of this and try to explain what the fuck is going on. I mean, yeah. the movie basically sets itself up as like, here's a bunch of teenagers. There's the spooky story from the past. Uh, and they're all going to be picked off one by one by a serial killer. And so there's a design, you know, creature thing, uh, uh re- a guy with a receding. Uh, uh, they're, they're all being stalked by a pirate. That zombie from? hair. That, where a pirate. does that fucking come from? Well, see, this Why is, does that even exist? That's, I what looks like after, that too. Yeah. that's what he looks like after spending 16 years in the river. He looks like the fucking Babadook with the receding hairline. He looks like a pirate. He looks like a blend between the Babadook and the dude from I Know What You Did Last Summer. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I thought there was a lot of like the Rob Zombie, the long coat, and you yeah. know, like the hey, living dead girl. Yeah, yeah. well, and he's, he's like kind of talk like that too. Yeah, he's like eight feet tall at some points too. You yeah. know, at some points he's really tall, other points he's not. I think this is the movie's Freddy Krueger villain, right? Well, this he is even the, goes a little Freddy. It's like, where's your bitch? Yeah, but the, well, yeah, he yeah. talks like he's the. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is the catalyst, or he, this is the evil soul right so this is like some kind of and the movie doesn't go here so i'm extrapolating sure this is some kind of timeless like freddy creature beast killer thing that is a phantom that lives eternally and has chosen but we never actually the, see that no no i know yeah. that's why i'm making well, this problem, shit up well, is colin's pitching movie, a better movie yeah he is because the movie is just like but is it a real even the characters in the movie are going is this a real dude is this a ghost they, they they're constantly arguing about that shit throughout the entire movie yeah. or so it doesn't give us a clear or picture bug of are you schizophrenic is it is. you and you don't know it right everyone accuses him of murder constantly in this movie right. everyone's also, the, like well you at the end of that movie he ain't making it out scot free. No, no. He killed. Uh, he's the only person alive yeah, in that oh, house. God. He's the only person alive with a bunch of dead people yeah. and his hand well, and what, his fingerprints on every on every murder weapon. Mm-hmm. But this is kind of why I was like at that point. I'm like, what the fuck is I'm like the writer of this movie has jumped right off the fucking reality train. I mean, I'm saying that the movie does not take place in any kind of objective right. reality, right? No. Because no. I mean, again, you got a guy who's like what 60s or 70s writing 16 year old kids, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, so like. And he's wake up and smell the Starbucks. The way yeah. that I wrote that down in my notes because it made me so angry. I was like the way that they talk to and relate to each other, kind of these stock kind of ways. And everybody's just dumping exposition all the fucking time. I actually thought like, I mean, there were times and I think I actually thought this within like the first 10 minutes, you know, where it was like super hyper go, 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 go. Like nobody stopped to take a fucking breath. It was there was just no, so much dialogue. It was dialogue stressing me out, honestly. I was the, like, I can't deal with all this. Yeah, as the action's happening, there's dialogue, and toward the end, it just, like, went there's into 20, the fucking there's red minutes. lines. There's 20 minutes of them just... We get the scene, and then we come back to the same scene of the oh, same yeah. two characters 
and they continue talking. Oh, yeah. It's you mean like while that. I went out your window, you went down to go oh, get coffee, so and so came in and got oh, killed. Shit. This person did this. It's like, we all have our hands up in the arena because we cannot happening. believe it. <laughs> that, that, that bit of exposition between <laughs> Bug and Alex. Alex at the end. Was baffling too much because I had just saw I saw it happen and then he explained it to me and somehow it was confusing. Yeah. I was like, I just saw it happen. How am I confused by it? He's like, so you you hit. Well, I had to ask you guys too. Like, what the fuck did he get in the window? And yeah. oh, yeah, I know. It, it becomes a you point where him, you're like, and you realize you didn't stab it or you didn't right. stab him, you didn't kill him and he and was then upstairs. You dropped the so knife you had to run in the sink. I was like, oh and my then god! Left. And, <laughs> but then you came back. You know, it doesn't help the like. Okay, so this movie's already incomprehensible. It doesn't help that like maybe it's just me because you know we've talked about I have hearing problems sometimes with these <laughs> movies, but I felt like everyone was fucking mumbling all their goddamn lines. I felt like no one opened their mouth and enunciated properly, especially the male actors in this movie. Well, I was like, I what the fuck are Alex you saying? Alex and Bug were supposed to be like. Apathetic fucking team. But Brandon, you know? the Brandon character, I had more of a problem with. I was like, "What the fuck are you saying? Open your mouth!" Like, I it it, it was like a mumblecore movie, but like, you see the jock? but like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Also, I don't mean to be. I'm not trying to throw shade at somebody. Why you can't cast like a handsome dude as a jock? I was gonna say, okay, the one thing I, I actually did like about this movie is they actually did look like legit high school students. They, they did. did. They, they did. did. Yes. Yeah. I'll That's give like, them that. They like, did. They don't look like thirty year olds. Right. Like, no. Or like they handsome thirty year olds. Yeah. She like, looks really young. Uh, yeah. yeah I was like, for sure. They look like ugly Bravo. high school kids. Like <laughs> it works. You know, it's believable. So. It's like wow. So you're it saying that that part of it's realistic. Yeah. There's a blind kid in this movie. Is there though? He falls over. He vaults over logs in the middle of the... He goes running through the woods, vaults over logs, hides, and then he's like, I'm blind. And I'm like... What? <laughs> so I'll, Blind here, people don't run through the woods. So we see, we see this, this kid in the movie. And he's friends with with uh, the two white guys, the Asian dude, and the black, kid, the black kid's blind. And we see them in the movie. I'm like, cool. They're like running away from like the cops. And he jumps over logs and like hang with his buddy. He's like, all right, dudes, I'll see you. I'm going home. And he just goes <laughs> off right. home by he himself. Goes home in the woods. By himself. And goes At home. night. At cool. night. Got it. Uh, which wouldn't matter to him, but okay. A few shots later, him and his buddies are showing up to school, and he's just like chit chatting with them, like nothing's changed. I like how this didn't hit you until his like sister, a little later. I in thought the movie, they were like, different actors. <laughs> I thought they were different actors because because he walked up to him and said like, "You're not hanging out with these like, dudes today, or whatever." Right, he's right, like, right. "See you guys," and just like walks away, no cane or anything. Yeah. And then later on, they Doing need. I think he did. I think he whipped the cane. No, out, he had like, him in the chest with was, it, right? Yeah, he, like slapped him in the yeah, chest. He with had it, yeah. but he was not I, using it. I mean, like, yeah. And so he was and, not using it appropriately either because he was hitting in the lockers with it later on. That made no sense. Like, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Because yeah. like, he knew they were there. And what? then halfway through the movie, they're trying to they're trying to make a distraction to get girls out of a girl's bathroom. And he comes out like with his head going back and forth like Stevie Wonder, like whacking his cane around. I'm like, oh, he's like. I'm like, how is he faking that he's blind? They they go to school with him. They don't know. He was like, he was playing more blind then, than he is. And then in my head, I'm like, Wait, is this dude been blind the whole fucking time? Yeah. Well, they made see they made a mention of this like in the delivery room that like, but I thought they were talking I about it, bugs. Yes, I did that, too. Like, and he's blind. And like, okay, my question though is like, <laughs> do you what, know when a baby's born right away that it's blind? Like, can you tell like as soon know. as the baby's born that's blind? Know. Well, I imagine you can shine a light or something but like that. But that scene. Was like all of two seconds. Oh, yeah, long. yeah, yeah. That yeah, scene was right. like baby's born and it's blind. What? Like, What's this? Well, in the beginning, I wasn't even aware that just like all oh, these babies are born premature. What a crazy night! I'm like, okay, well, whatever. They're in a maternity ward in a hospital. Crazy yeah. night. Carry on. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But what does it add to the movie to have this character be blind? I mean, like just from the <laughs> literally you know, nothing. It would have been better if they were like delivering was like this one's a jock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this yeah. A jock. It, him being blind comes around to nothing. Because no, it, it doesn't affect him being able to. I would argue anything, it even right? hinders the plot, if anything, right? Because it just, well, especially it the makes, third it's act, it's it confused me. It, yeah. Well, and, and the third act makes no sense if you think about him being blind because he shows up in that closet, and then when they ask him oh, how he got there, he says he climbs up a rope to the roof. Yeah, how did he what? find the damn rope? How. He, a blind person just gonna climb up a no blind person a roof? is that good like, blind you people. Do? If you are listening or brailing, <laughs> brailing this episode, yeah. please write in blind, and let us know. Blind people, do you walk around homes looking for ropes hanging out of windows very yeah, often? Yeah. Right. Oh, I assume that he knows the rope is there because it's his friend, and he said that this is the place. I don't but know. I'm trying to. I'm but trying to walk three miles to get to the but house. Like his, he just ran through the woods, Sean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. at top speed. Also, because the time this is in is bizarre too. Everywhere in this town. 
to get to anywhere in this town, you have to trudge through deep woods. Right, deep swamp land. Like, yeah. everybody's just, like, cutting through well, woods. Well, it is called River, Riverton. Every, river, uh, true. It must yeah. cut yeah, through It's not called town. Foreston. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I saw a river most of the That places. blind kid, though, like, when when he's describing how he climbed the rope and onto the roof, it's not as simple as I climbed the rope and got on the roof. He says, so I climbed the rope, and then I did this, and then we landed on the roof for a and little bit, and then I heard this. Right. Like, it's a very detailed story. Like, I would buy it more if he oh, yeah. was just like, I climbed up the rope. Like, if that's all he said, I'd be like, it's strange oh, okay. that like once I can't remember it may have been this movie that actually made me start wa- watching movies for when people enter other people's houses yeah. like at the the time that the movie needs them to be there like we have to get this information of this character and the character suddenly shows up like doesn't knock at the front door like just opens the door and walks into your house this happens a lot now you're gonna see it like I've stage play for 20 yeah. years I wouldn't dare yeah. enter their house without being no, like but in this movie it's like there's at least three people in the climax of this film that just show up in a person's house and you're like Wait, what? It breaks your brain. You're like, sometimes what multiple are they times doing in there? the same situation. Yeah, we need the cop in this situation. It's played by Frank Grillo, obviously, in like yeah. uh, you know early role. Mm-hmm. He like just shows up in the house. Uh, the kid upstairs, the blind kid, shows up in the house, and uh, Alex just shows up in the, and like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, All so these people the are just popping out of fucking doors. Why in the not house? focus on the cop in this Ooh, and like yeah. have him trying to like. Like in his head, remember the pieces of the past, and then like putting it together, what's going on now? Instead, he's just like randomly in four scenes and like barely in it at all. Make it like a procedural and I thought about gonna, him following, and, right? It. Yeah, I thought yeah, they were yeah. gonna go back to him again, or even like have two storylines, like his and then the kids' point of views at the same time, and cut back and forth. And yeah, I thought they're gonna go back to story again because like, like, oh, that girl that that does the ripper cut in the neck when he was in the ambulance, mm-hmm. like the beginning of the movie. Like, oh, they bring her back too. Like, oh, they'll try, they'll start to figure it out. Like, no, they just like are the most non-deep characters that don't do anything for the movie at all. Yeah. Except for just die again. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I was trying to figure out like what his, I like the fact. And that was also, I was like, Oh, he's in a trench coat. You know what? Like I could turn the fucking sound off and I know that he's a cop, you know, it's like, and then I mean, his part was like, what? So he was there the night of, he's the guy who caught the Ripper. In you know again the opening and the ending of this movie. he got like, shot by the we're, Ripper we're gonna, too. Everybody gets shot like a hundred times and lives for yeah. like I assume he and delivers and whatever, yeah. like long monologues. I assume about, he was a cop though and had bulletproof vest on because he lifted up his shirt that. and yeah, you saw the, the vest, yeah saw, yeah you saw the like bruises from the vest. Yeah. But that was yeah, but it. Michonne, who's the partner, other she's the coroner. She takes a knife to the throat and like is gushing blood. Yeah, she's fine. A couple of years, sixteen years later. Um but yeah, he shows up in the final, the uh, denouement of the movie to like, you're like, okay, so he provides some, something for the character of Bug. Bug is the central uh, character. What does he give? What does he, what purpose does he serve? None. All he does is blame Bug again. Yeah. They're like, okay, five people have already done that. Like, mm-hmm. he's there to convince you that Bugs the killer as part of a red herring thing that they're doing. Yeah, but they've, they've been alluding to him being the killer the whole time. Oh, everyone wait, everyone did else say is saying, this? didn't you murder someone? Didn't you murder the, someone? The whole gist of the movie is that basically, yeah, there's seven people who were born, and one of them has this spectral ripper. That so, one of them is the bad killer. And right. all and of the other the ones, of right. all the ones that are not Bug have been told that Bug is the one that has it. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And Bug can also change his he they, they allude to the fact that he spirits? might be schizophrenic right. but they don't really explain what that means uh, they show him like talking in like their other the voices the other yeah. six kids he voices he adopts the personality so into the, the souls but, but of the other people but there's but not even a thing because if it, if it was like he's like well they're all in me now like all but they died but like but he was also using their voices before yeah well, well, he uses while they were all still, alive, were all still yeah. alive. Yeah. Even his sister. He's a regular, like, oh, oh, Billy oh, oh, Crystal. Wait, can we talk about the sister real quick? Sure. So the Go sister, Fang, uh, Fang yeah. right? Slash Leah. Where the nickname Fang? I know we already had mentioned no, We already no, said that. I have no, I have no idea, idea where that came from. But it's because it's cool, man. She lords yes. over the That's other girls like at the 2011, school. We're saying. <laughs> she, uh, you know, conducts her business in the high school bathroom. We're and basically threes and eights. Which I'm like, huh? But those are how many, the, the severity That's, of a beating that yes. the jock is supposed to administer to people. What? So she's basically like running the show. Um, yep. So they set her up as like a main antagonist of the movie, right? Because the rest of them are, they know each other, are somewhat friendly. I mean, the jock, you know, notwithstanding. Right. Um, and then there's a moment in the movie because she she talks, uh, the, her friend, uh, the blonde, 
Brittany. Brittany. Out of uh, going out with Bug. Bug's interested right. in Brittany, and there's this whole little drama yeah, thing. Yeah, don't like Bug. Right, don't like Mug, she says to Brittany. And then later, there's this scene where, I mean, I got, I got to admit, like, when I saw this in the theater, I was shocked out of my head that, that it's like they're brother and sister. They live in the same house, and the music sting, and that is like, ta-da! You couldn't have guessed this, suckers, that she's actually his sister. Bam! What does that do for the movie? She's the real villain of this movie. Is she? Yeah. Like, if, if you're, like, actually, like, examining this movie, yeah. She's, she's a fucking terror. Like, because she had a traumatic childhood which may or may not line up timeline wise as because we were talking she's about off the daughter of the ripper and knows who she is she yep. knows she's a daughter yeah right yep. she knows would you know if, you, if if you're two and a half right three, three years yeah. old three years max. old max. three max what? three max yeah if it was like to the day it was three. so yeah. less right. than three years yeah old. would you even remember would you that? remember yeah i don't remember anything and it was right. now kids do absorb things but Three year olds, I don't think are going to have yeah, the if psychology I take, that. If I no. take a three year old away and I tell it for the rest of its life that I'm its dad, it's probably going to believe me. Yeah, the yeah. psychology that she has when she like lays into Bug later on does not match you up. You ruined my life right. it by does, being it does born. not match up with, yeah, right. with what actually yeah. happened. So that doesn't did, make sense. Is she blaming the. the. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is she blaming. She's blaming Bug. Barbara's for killing the on, Ripper, you're saying, on the infant on the kid who was born in the that womb night. Yeah, Bug. Yeah, it's his fault. Why? Well, no, she's saying. I think this is. She's saying that basically she because was she was older, everybody she has that awareness. Everyone has always talked to her. She is the daughter of the Ripper, right? And so she's had to deal with being the daughter of the Ripper her entire life. They don't know shit. that. She does. She knows it. Bug, for some reason, Which, has been sheltered. Which, how it doesn't get back to the other kids in that regard. Well, they all know, but they haven't ever told Bug. We're seeing the yeah. movie from Bug's point of view. He's been in and out of institutions his entire life, and therefore is a quote-unquote innocent, as she says. But, like, why he has he been know. in institutions if he was, like, if he had no exposure to any of this stuff? That's what it is, because he has the bad, quote-unquote, bad soul. Well, Allegedly, well, they he think he has the bad... No, yeah, but, but he, they think he does. But he all, he's uh, exhibiting schizophrenic tendencies correct. even before right. we meet him in the movie. He's talking to himself and doing all this stuff because... He's part of the, you know, whatever. He's the most sensitive, well, and we're uh, supernaturally, to the, the souls of the set. We're supposed to like him. He's supposed to be a 16-year-old, and he's got buddies. He has three good friends. Mm-hmm. And they're all sitting there. They think the ripple will come out tonight. Like, oh, my God, do you think he will? Like, dude, come on. Fucking no. I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but it was yeah, like, it was yeah. like a... A bizarrely like childlike, like four year old level of scare. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, scared. I was like, is he a bad actor or is this just poorly written? Right. I mean, poorly written. Poorly written. They did it like four or Both. five times in the first like 20 minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? I was like, just get like, it together. I'm man. not, I, like, I'm just a regular moviegoer and I cannot relate to you and I'm supposed to. Well, and like, okay, so with Fang, right? So th- I, I feel like a better analog for her in other movies is, okay, so she's the daughter of this killer, right? So she's like, the Jamie Lloyd from Halloween, right? And like Jamie Lloyd had had people picking on her, but it did not push her into this fucking psychopathic lifestyle. Yeah, and but that was the eighties. Now in the twenty tens, I don't know. Like I, I feel girls. like we've seen that same type of like archetype in other movies where like it didn't go that way. It's not a good enough justification for why her character is the way she is. Because Fang grows up to be Emma Roberts from Scream Four. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It really did feel, I mean, again, you know, talking about the screenplay of this, it felt like this movie was written by a person who uh, doesn't have like much, like doesn't have much contact or understanding of how (laughs) the the subjects of his uh, movie or the world in which they would exhibit kind of exist. So, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, you kind of have to, to appreciate the movie. You have Do to. I? Here we go. Do you I have now? to adopt the 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 perspective of the filmmaker who's making this movie for you and the world that he's created because it's not the world that we exist in mm. or recognize in any kind of way. Did we talk about the uh, California Condor? Okay, okay, I have questions about this because this is the first time I've ever seen this movie. 
Oh and, yeah, yeah. First time, yeah. <laughs> Brandon, first time. My first time. Yeah. First time? Okay. Okay, this and is that imagery is everywhere for the that movie. That that condor costume, like yeah. the way that that image is used in like marketing and trailers and stuff, makes you think that that is like the killer's get up. Like right? it's supposed to be like, or it's supposed to be just like a thing, like a, th- a I, thing that's following they, them or something. Or they're trying right? to make it a theme in the yeah. movie, and then just they, I mean, besides like the few points I'm sure we'll bring up in just a moment, like the end credits where they like they start talking about like. The, the condor feeding out his carrion. Yeah. And I was just like, Well, even like so? his, his, like, <laughs> his, well, May slash his mom for who he, th- he thinks his, his mom is like justifying his like interest in it to the principal even as being like, they do good work. You know, they clean up the earth to make way for new life. Oh, like, Jesus. Everyone yeah. has that a justification like, uh, okay. for it. Well, here's the thing. I mean, this is what I know about Wes Craven. So this is where I'm reading this into the movie. The guy was an avid bird watcher and a yep. member of the Audubon Society and wrote <laughs> articles, I think. So he, you know, it's like when you're, when you're listening to the character's dialogue, it's like, this is a guy who has studied and, you know, learned something about these birds and is like, how can I work this into a movie? So his lead character (laughs) is, you know, interested in these type of birds. The California condor is some kind of gigantic beast bird, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, swoops down on its prey and eats, you know, like dead uh, animals or whatever the hell. And it's a very scary thing. He does a show and tell for like science class or whatever. He he hand makes a crazy costume. It's awesome. It is awesome. But it is no awesome. high schooler awesome. comes up with this in the no. middle of two o'clock in the morning. He is supernaturally influenced in the making of that costume. That's true in the in this film. In this film. And so his buddy Alex runs around with this costume on terrorizing the class in what I have to admit is a scene that like stuck with me after. Sure. That's what I remember from this movie is the, like the end and that scene. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But then there's a lot of it because then then there's a, like this mythology that's built into it where the Native Americans thought that the condor like absorbed <laughs> yeah, the, like the souls of. of the 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 the, the things that it would eat mm. and it was the keeper of the souls and all this other stuff and there's a, yeah. a lot of analogies it's that they're so trying to make stretched. between the condor and Max or sorry Matt Max that's his real name that's his real name yeah. uh, Bug Bug Rug, yes Adam. or Alex. Bug Bug he's Adam Adam, Adam is his real name Adam yeah. Hellerman yeah AKA Bug. Um. Yeah, it's just like it's really bizarre. It's just, it's like, it's just like, sh- like, like, like Michaela was saying, like the whole kind of thing is just like shoehorned into like. Well, yeah. we have this movie. Well, it's it's just shoehorned. It's like built around it. It feels like, but, uh, it, but, but it doesn't but not, lead but to it anything. Doesn't, but it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't yeah. amount to anything though. So what was well, the that, point that, of building that, it in? Was, like that's it. It's built around it, but doesn't lead to anything. Yeah, because he puts up the the crow or the raven up in the woods as a guard as well. Mm. Like this theme. I thought that was going to be something. Oh, and like, he has pictures of it all over the walls in his yeah. bedroom. Yeah. There are pictures of that fucking. Kind of I think everywhere. it's just because, like Wes Craven, he's a kid who's interested in birds. Well, that's cool, but that doesn't mean he needs to I be know, in a movie. It doesn't do anything like, for the like, movie, yeah. except yeah. I'm like, well, I haven't seen this character in a movie before, yeah. you know? And it's right. something personal to the director, mm-hmm. right? I think a lot of this movie is extremely personal to him. Sure. Because I, uh, you know, well, we were talking. Well, you can't I say think, that because now I'm going to feel bad about shitting all well, over. No, no, well, I think no, you can I still. Think it is. Uh, it does. It still is. <laughs> I, I, that doesn't make it good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily makes it good, but I think that there's, you know, I think because there was an interview that he did, I think around the time of Scream 4, mm. where they were talking about, because this movie, like, what did make it the box office? It bombed. Uh, it was, it, it bombed. wasn't good, no. Yeah, it went, it even like, got, straight in the toilet. It even got post-converted to 3D to try and make more money. <sighs> oh, did it really? <laughs> oh, Colin oh, just yikes. sighed very hard. Oh, I didn't yeah, see it, it did. in 3D. It That's was, why I think it was 2009 to 2011, somewhere right, in there. because they stopped to take a whole, like, year to post-convert this to 3D, because it was such a huge thing then. I, I remember seeing... But by the time it came out... Like, right, the, yeah. the, the, exactly. Yeah. The what scene, thing what scene is 3D in this? It's like a knife, I like, coming no over. Yeah. The, the condor costume coming yeah. in in 3D. <laughs> I remember seeing the trailer for this constantly. Like, this was all... The marketing for this was all over the place. MTV, it was like every commercial break the trailer. Right, yeah, that theme song. Yeah. One of us is going yeah. Oh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Sick Puppies. Yes, yeah, I know. Yeah. Because yeah. of the trailer for this, so I like got but like album. they really focused <laughs> yeah. on the trailer. They really focused on the rolling fog. There was lots of rolling fog, which yeah. like it happens in one scene in this movie. Yeah. And then the the condor and like I was like, oh, this like like a Mothman type movie is what I kind of thought it was going to be. Yeah, because it yeah. focused on that one shot of that bridge. That goes yeah, like four times 
in the first 20 minutes and then never again. Yeah, exactly. That bridge shot was in the trailer so many times. Yeah. 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 25 million was the budget for this movie. The box office was 21.5. 25 million to yeah. make this movie? Yeah. There's I mean, no this locations. Is, that, this is that before was how, like, reshoots. This is before <laughs> Blumhouse revolutionized the uh the, the, movie. There's the, what? The business house model. school River, also, those are your locations. Also, no other people in this movie besides the characters that are in yeah. the movie. Some of those shots of the just terribly CG'd blood. Oh, it's uh, so bad. Like that's so your 25 bad. mil. Can't yeah. you buy just like corn syrup and right? Wouldn't that be cheaper? I know. Yeah. yeah. You're sitting there going, like, they, at some point, like they had, you can have like a mixture that you put together. It's real blood. Right. It looks you pretty can do good. This. I've so, seen yeah. it before yeah. you many times. To. And it looks better than this, which is like, yeah, like it's really colorized bad. waves of blood. Like, yeah. It's like, this is terrible. Ugh. There's yeah. some like spurting out of like necks and this stuff. This was like was a really, really bad too. expensive Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Yeah. It was well, like, when were they, uh, it was Brittany when they killed her and it's like, you oh, see yeah. her feet and it's like, like pools of like, and it wasn't even like CGI. It was like animated. Right. Yeah. It's like blurry yeah. animated blood. Yeah. Like, I'm like, there's real blood in there. Terrible. But then there's also, what is this? Yeah, because like I was looking, the, the stuff on her that shoes that was dripping on her there. shoes seemed kind of real. That's real. But then there's just like, what is this puddle at the bottom? That's just blurred out. And yeah. Blurred the computer was blood. Frank Grillo like half the budget or something? Like, he was where did this all back go? Back. I know. That, that's what doesn't make any sense. There's not even like one cameo appearance of someone there's that would no be expensive. No, there's no single star in the film. And none of these actors are worthy of any sort of star power. Like, I understand why their careers went nowhere after this. Uh, They're wasn't not the great. Wasn't played Alex in something? Yeah, I've he, seen him before. Uh, uh, I've seen them all Alex before. was in The Big Short. You ever see The Big he Short? He was in something else, too. He's been in other things. Like, he, he's he, done he, stuff. He played, like, another, like, snot-nosed kid yeah, in something. he's done stuff, and he's the one I know most besides Max Terrio, who was oh, in Bates Hotel. Oh, I forget that I get fucking mm. 3G But other here. than that, those yeah. are, like, the two that came out of this the best, aside from, like, Raul Esparza. What was the name of this movie again? My soul. <laughs> Ouch. My yeah. soul. Twenty five eight is what it was called. Yeah. Yeah, either one, I'm bringing it uh, up on Google. Um, uh, uh, Twenty five eight might not. Uh, at this point. Well, I know that Wes Craven was disappointed by the the oh, performance of this well, movie. Yeah, sure. thanks. Oh yeah. Did you guys look up what this has on Rotten Tomatoes? Like it's like eight percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it wasn't well it's received. Harsh. I mean, everybody no. hated it. Um, it's, it's, but I think. But this is the thing. I think. I think. Uh, again, I'm working on the unified uh, Wes sure, Craven right, theory, right, right. right? Between Shocker yeah, and this. coming back to this, yeah. Because the things that I keep seeing in Wes Craven, these Wes Craven movies, right? So you have the idea. Well, first of all, you know, you have, obviously, we know that he's into birds, so the character is into birds. You have um, the idea that um, the, the father, right? There's always this thing about the father. Mm-hmm. The father is... Um, Done evil or something, right, yeah. right? And there's the fear that it sin. has been passed on to you, the kid. The kid is afraid that, like, he somehow, because I think in Shocker, it's like that you're just like me, you know, kind of thing. We're like, yeah, yeah I'm nothing like you. Uh, so there's that kind of thing. And the idea that it's like, and then the um, the the super religious um, uh, character, mm-hmm. I think, Literally. because... What I have learned of Wes Craven, I was trying to look up like his bio because I'm like, what the fuck? Because I don't know much about like his history other than. Oh, I recognize him from Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Which everyone's order. been on at some uh, point in time. Four. So he's been yeah. on four times. Oh, wow. Different <laughs> characters every time. But wow, I know bravo. that uh, I know that Wes Craven was uh, raised in a super religious Baptist um, uh, family, which apparently was more on his mother's side than his father's side. His father. Uh, apparently was an alcoholic and died at 40 years old when Wes Craven was four years old. So I'm like, was he abusive? Like, what did you know about your father or whatever, you know, before, uh, you know, four years old. Uh, and then his mother raised him extremely strict and he apparently was only able like they, the, whatever the religious, um, affiliation of Baptist that they subscribed to was like, the Bible is a literal thing. And so he was only able to watch Disney movies. Until he got out of... uh, Right, because that's... Yeah, Disney is okay. And then he became like a humanities professor and then eventually went into the film... uh, Into filmmaking. Um, But there's, I think, the dialogue that that, uh, Penelope has the religious girl in this... You know, it seems like, what? who is she talking about? Like, make sure the flames of hell don't... You know, that seems like something that he picked up. It's like, that's his mother. Right. You know? It's like that's his mother. He's in there a little bit. Is the fear of like something being passed on from you know the like another generation? His father is also in there. I looked up a quote today 
after uh, thinking about this, and I found on Bloody Disgusting, I think, he said that I do like stories about kids within a family situation and the secrets of the family. That was interesting to me. It was also interesting to do a film where the central character was male instead of female, because in some ways it may have been autobiographical in a strange way. You know, it felt like it was time to do something that was a bit closer to the way I felt when I was growing up. So that's my kind of coming of age film. I think this is the most personal thing that Wes Craven ever did. That's a depressing. <laughs> I don't thought. know. I, I people under the stairs feels kind of personal too with that the way that whole family dynamic works. But so. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like he can't stop working right. that. He's right. trying to work something out in his film. The family dynamic mm-hmm. is always broken and fractured. There are so many scenes that take place in houses, in bedrooms, and bathrooms. It's like it's this kind of. Uh, it's always from within. Yeah. Yeah. Inside this like broken family mm-hmm. unit. I don't know. It's an interesting. I'm trying to work on like the psychology of like where his movies came from. There's a book called Wes Craven, The Man and His Nightmares, but apparently it doesn't go like. Doesn't get into it. I don't know. Yeah, it feels Maybe like- they don't want to talk about it. Uh, probably not. Well, I mean, that's why he's working through it. It feels like his dad was a bad dude, died early, the and his mom was, uh, I don't know, probably always eyeballed him and, you know, be like, just don't end up like your father. Or mm. just like saw things in him that's, like, that's just like your father. And he spent, it feels like Wes Craven has spent his life trying not to be that. Yeah. So, like, was his father violent? A violent I, it, drunk or something? something. Like, He's his like father a, was not a good person. Well, I think one of his quotes, which kind of went around, like, when he passed, was uh, horror movies, what was it? Horror movies don't create fear, they um, they expel it or something like that. Mm-hmm. Was, you know, it's like, so it, it really is like he's seeing horror films as, like, a therapy right. that he's going to somehow, you know, get all this Right. If I can get it out this way, then I won't get it out the way my dad did, mm-hmm. which is not a good way to get it out. Yeah, I think that I argument wonder. can be made. I wonder as well. And unless there's somebody out there who knows more about this, like, than what Wes Craven, like, took to his grave, then this is um, maybe the best view into that psychology that we're ever going to get. It's like we have to study these these certain films that he made around these subjects in order to figure that out, in order mm. to see that. I think that's going to end up being... Like, all we know about that aspect of his life. Well, I know. Well, if you know, if you do know something, I mean, like, hey, hit us up because I'm cu- sure. I'm curious as all hell. I mean, if I'm looking in the wrong places, but I mean, I the feel more- like we're on the right track. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So this film, we got condors attacking uh, or whatever people dressing Students, up as condors yes. and running around. Uh, eventually, it is revealed that uh, friend Alex is the. Bat's hole. The Ripper. The Ripper. Is it arbitrary or could it have been anybody up until, or could it have been, basically it comes down to, it's either Bill Fang or Alex until that point in the movie. So could you have just anybody. gone like. One thing this movie did good was, and I'm not sure it did it on purpose, <laughs> was make me actually wonder who it was mm-hmm. a million times. And I'll give it, I will tentatively give it credit for that. Because it also just made it more confusing, and not in a good way, not like in a, like a fun like who done it way. It was more just like um, this is a clusterfuck, <laughs> and it literally they could just pick anybody and they could just say that that, that was it. And that's well, it can't be like the black guy it. or the well, black blind guy, right? Because he can't see I anything. No, it could be. It, it could be. Been. It I feel like been. they were going for it. Just yeah. like I figured, they always thought he was an option. He had that jump out- scare of coming out of the closet. The, were there for a split second? They wanted you to think that's who it was. Right. So he's been off, like killing all these people in the am, guise of the Ripper. But like we said during he's the just movie, pretending to be blind. Uh, but like or we he said during the movie, and nobody would expect it. Like, oh man, exactly. Like, here, like, man. Bravo, been, buddy. Mm-hmm. But I think yeah. that they forgot right. that kid was in the movie, and were just like, oh shit, we need to bring him back because we got to kill him off in order to like, like pare it down to figure out who the actual killer is. Which, th- this is where his, his being blind makes the least amount of sense. Even more implausible than, than climbing the rope onto the roof is but He goes Alex, through the window, right? Is it, is he, does he climb onto the roof? He says he goes onto, onto the, the roof. roof, yeah. Onto the roof to go into the window. Yeah, that's what he says. He I says like in his whole big long line, oh, okay, we climbed okay. the rope and then we got on the roof and then we waited for a little bit and we heard this. But anyways, Alex's plan is to pin it all on the blind kid and make it look like the blind kid was <laughs> really killing him. That's plan. his be- the best he can come up with. Pin it on the blind kid. Killed everyone. There's like five dead people in the house and you're going to blame it on the one That's blind the person. That's the craziest thing. 
That's a cop. So did they? Did, did Wes so Craven he, forget so that he was that blind? Mean that, that the that the dude's psychopathic soul father is also a fucking moron. Yeah, yeah. It apparently, so yeah. We're gonna try and blame the blind kid for all I of this. this. Yeah. I got this. I got this. <laughs> that guy. We're gonna blame the black guy. He's a blind. Ah, fuck. Yeah. That's a. Well, because he's they trying to said something about race in this movie too. But they didn't. And they didn't. No. But he's trying to make a uh, like a deal with. I mean, if the killer is, you know, yeah, uh, he's trying he, to make he, a deal. He, he, why? Saying, if he, he why just kill him? Yeah, because he and gets off on matter. killer. That's the, what he does. He's the Ripper. He kills people. Right. Why but, would you say like oh, I could kill you right now? Or I'll make a deal with you. Is that? But it doesn't matter. The deal doesn't matter. The right. deal won't change anything. But is the deal supposed to be demonstrating that Alex is fighting against the the bad soul inside if of him? Like is, there's like a wrestling match the, going on there. Do that, but his his dad made a deal with him. Was it, trying to make a deal with himself in the fucking mirror at the beginning too. Right. Mm-hmm. I think it was there's supposed to be a, a call back to that. Right. Do this. It was or like the I'll same thing. Your family. Yeah. Yeah. No, you won't call the. You won't. You won't tell anybody or I'll kill your whole family. Then he yeah. calls his doctor and then his whole fucking family's dead. Why souls are trying to make deals with I don't people. know. It doesn't Dude, make sense. It doesn't, I'm telling it you. It doesn't, ends up not mattering. I got mattering. this, though. I got this. Okay. Right? okay. It is because there was, again, we're, we're going out, out of time. That there has always been this evil, like, you know, force, the river, the river killer. And there's always been seven people to stand against him. And they've always, like, eventually, if he kills them all, he absorbs them. Right, like and a so, Highlander scenario. Right, this has just happened over and over and over again. There always has to be the seven, and so by Abel, the first Ripper, being killed, it sets those souls free. They occupy these other kids, and then they're going to have this like thing. He's got to go collect them again, and so he has to absorb happening. them all. But this is why I'm saying for the. I mean, I'm thinking that this is the actual logic of the movie, right? Right or wrong. But then it doesn't make sense why he would make sense, or sorry, why make a deal with the other. Fu- he has to try- kill yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. In, like that's how this works. You have to kill him in order to absorb his soul. This is the so, rules. Yeah, exactly. That I think the movie. I is thought setting that up. too. Why make the deal if the whole the, the, point was yeah. that you absorb? Which is what the other guy said. Like, oh, I'm like, I think they even said at some point, I'm getting more powerful because I like. They're all, but they well, said that's, that that's Bug saying they're all with me now, but he's not the killer. Like I don't, I think he's yeah. But does it narrow it down? Is it like the Highlander where you kill and I get your energy, yeah. or just like, or is it like, well, all the ones that die are now like, so now there's at the end there's seven and those two of them. No, there's all. How, all, does, the, how does the all, math work? No, all here? the other, all the <laughs> yeah. ones that were killed before went into bug, right. which is weird because if you kill them, they should go into the killer. Well, I think they were in both of them. No, a I, little think, bit. I think they were in Bug, and I think, but that also makes because Bug it, gave them all the pieces of the puzzle to put the whole thing together at the end. Remember, he's like, and the, he's like, because he's like, and then Brittany said this, and then so and so said this. building a timeline right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, right. what the hell? They're talking to him, no. uh, you know. Apparently, he can it, hear them talking. It makes the deal part of it make even less sense because if he's trying to get the souls and Bug has them, he would just kill Bug yeah. and then get the souls. Right. So him trying That's to make a saying. deal makes even less sense. Uh, or, or if Bug has, if if he, you know. Is that Bug has uh, the souls or at least someone in them, yeah, and he can piece the whole thing together, then fucking kill him and then leave, and yeah. you're good to go. Yeah. Just leave. Also, yeah. didn't they like nonchalantly say at one point that having the bad soul gives you like super strength? Yeah, they, they, that's, that's what I'm saying, what yeah. saying. right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like I'm smaller than you, you could kick my ass, but if you had the super soul, the bad it's soul, you it wouldn't matter. <laughs> That's exactly what but they, they wait until that moment in the third act to introduce the fact that having a bad soul means you're like Jason, basically. Right. Also, you know? I have a question. Is so? <laughs> oh yeah, we have I, an I, answer I, for this. Oh, sure, I bet you do. Yeah. I is, have a question. Is, but is Alex just whole jumping episode? into a costume to kill people? Because, uh, I don't know. Because, I'm saying, why does that? What does that costume come from? What does it like mean? We does everybody see? The, does everybody bug? see the costume? Right. That's what I was going to ask. Did or is bug? Is it, is it supposed to be like a thing of his schizophrenia? This is no, what I was thinking. Because the, guy, the Asian guy that Fang. got killed at the beginning saw the costume. Fang, I think, sees it. But wait, the Asian guy at the beginning who gets killed immediately after that murder scene bug wakes up from a nightmare so right. the idea being that bug that could have been bug right. is there somehow yeah. personifying he's, his he's the objective viewer of that he's us in that so he's like, viewing yeah. that seeing that yeah i mean i'll go with that but, we, but there's there no, a cause... you don't have to it's dumb it, well, no yeah. it's, but i think that's <laughs> it but there, because there's nothing i don't think the I don't, yeah but this is what i'm no. thinking i don't think he is dressing up in a costume i think that is right. just how the 
like how we're seeing that's that's, 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 that's the true gonna, ripper soul that is right. the, yes, okay. yes 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 that's okay. that's but the soul. there is a costume yeah, that sh- does exist in this world because they we see the puppet at the very yeah. when they have the ripper day ceremony in thing. a similar so, like, costume yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it does exist in oh, their yeah. world that costume that's does why, exist but so. you can't do both those because you're going to confuse the shit yeah. out of your audience right but like you say every time we see the ripper that's a manifestation like that's not some dude in a costume that is that's that what is I the kinda soul got the, vibe of the swamp at. monster ripper yeah. thing, the river like that ripper. makes more Then why sense. have it in a costume though? Why even have a costume? How like, would they know what it looks like? Well, does it does it wow. have to look like anything? Do you have to see anything like that? You know, well, you it just look like a guy. But that would be better for like the the angle of like the whodunit angle. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's just a guy or if it's just a silhouette. Like it doesn't need to be this big fucking elaborate weird receding hairline you. Babadook, Completely. you know? Like it's <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know I why why go why have a costume in your like manifestations at all you know that is the it's just, <laughs> it is a bunch of why like, why yeah, why yeah. why you yeah. can sit through this hour or two how long? hour forty seven hour forty seven yeah. minutes and just go why 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 see there's why? no reason this movie couldn't be eighty five minutes you know why well. It- <laughs> I mean, I imagine it would make even less sense that, you know, 85 minutes. Right, because they're cutting out the 20 minutes of exposition because that that's Alex all and doing. Bugs yeah, stand there and do. They are explaining everything throughout that happens the in the movie throughout the movie. And we're saying that even even sitting through that, we need a fucking diagram. You need yeah. to have a flow chart and diagrams and all this stuff. And a map you. of the house to hey, tell me where everyone's at. at when some they're point. in the bathroom and hide the phone up there. Yeah, in the high school. What does it add to the movie? She, they're able to gain uh, the information that uh, Brittany, no, yeah, no, well, what does it, yeah, <laughs> that Brittany doesn't like bug. I guess, okay, okay. okay. Brittany doesn't this, like is, this is a reach, this is a reach, um, <laughs> it's breaking down the trust between, like, the seven of them, because, she, like, Fang says all that shit about, like, well, and he just uses him, he's his monkey, and, he, you know, don't date him, he's gross, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, that also doesn't make sense with the reveal later that that's his sister saying that, because if he lives with a manipulative bitch like that, he knows she's just going to say whatever to Correct. manipulate right. people. And so, if Brittany knows that that's his sister, which everybody fucking does, yeah. you can say, okay, it's your fucking older yeah. sister. Yeah, right. gives a and fuck, yeah. That seriously. Yeah. That whole scene is just like so... It's long too. It's a bunch of scenes because yeah. also when like Brandon beats up, um, gives the three and the eight to Alex and why Buck, does he do that? He, well, that's because fuck Fang's hanging them out for whatever reason. They explain but, later wait, why. Wait, it why? Why does Fang have power over him? She runs the school. Yeah, man. That's say, so yeah. stupid. She, well, he's the muscle. Well, but it, he also says after he beats him, he's like, uh, "Hey, also stay away from him." It's like, why are they trying to keep everyone apart? Like he says to I Alex, stay know. away from Bug. Well, and there's Bug, uh, so so Brittany calls in the quote unquote like beating orders, right? For yeah. Fang, right? Why? So, but like, there's an implication twice in this movie that like she has to give him a blowjob for those orders. Like that's brought up twice, and there's a like, w- wait, what is the system? Like, what is also, the why the 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 Jack dude? His is it made to be unlikable, but at the same time you're like he's unlikable, but he's a part of these seven people, and they're kind of all in this together. And then flash forward forty five minutes, and he is forcing a woman to give him a blowjob. Yeah, and, and I'm like, chasing what? her through the woods, the fu- yeah. oh, between to the do, woods, he's to do whatever to like, her. What if, is if going he were to on? Catch her? Yeah. Let me ask you this: Who's the most sympathetic character? Who who'd you like the most in this? Brittany. Movie? Brittany. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Yeah. She she didn't really do anything wrong. She just got. Caught up in a, she had no power and she knew it. That's so what she, makes her you know, likable. Is like, well, at least she's not motivating any of this chaos. She's just a in this movie. Yes, yeah, seems like well, she feels she, bad. She, she was also she was also moment. turning. Like her character was turning. Her, right. her, her character was becoming like I actually. We discover like, oh, she actually kind of does like Bug, and that's kind of she cute. has an awkward moment with him where they're having the conversation and she's walking away. Like and she has a moment, and it's kind of a thing. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's kind of it's kind of adorable, and that's kind of like a, a little bit realistic, maybe. Right. And I was, and and then then ten minutes later, she's fucking <laughs> dead. Oh, no, and then three minutes later, you're like, all right, well, you're gonna give me a fucking blowjob. Then you're yeah. like, okay, fucking bugs gonna come beat this dude's ass tight. Right. That's gonna be awesome. No. Uh, 
Also, like on the blowjob note, like I wrote this down because I was really confused by it. But like when, so when she's calling in the orders to him and he's like a three and an eight, whatever, and he's like implying like you'll have to pay for this in blowjobs, like she says, well, like why doesn't my dog like bite your dick off and bury it in my backyard? And he says, how, how big's backyard? your backyard? But, when he, <laughs> but okay, I don't know. No, that's, not the, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue is, the issue is. He had hung uh, yeah. up the phone and was not talking to her when he said that. I mean, he's having an aside. To the right. Yeah. He's telling yeah. himself funny yeah. jokes yeah, about right. how dig, big his dick is. Like, yeah. I think this comes from the age of the guy writing the dialogue. But that yeah. actor's delivery was fucking terrible. Like, he did not sell it. He did not sell it. It's not realistic. He does That's not like do the, it. the the this movie equivalent of like flipping off your parents through the door. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Nobody can see it. It's like, just It makes you feel better. Yeah. At this point. But he. I had this joke in my back pocket and I'm going to fuck it. That actor said it though. That actor seemed like he was embarrassed to say it though. Like he threw it away. He didn't hit it hard or like hit it. I don't know. It did. It didn't work. And he he could tell that actor was like, "Fuck, I uh, don't want to say this." Well, the dialogue of this movie. There is one line I did. Would you like one or two lines that I did like in this movie? Um, After uh, Bug stabs Alex because he realizes he's the killer and everything, he's like, "I thought that guy would never leave." I, I Alex actually, says I, this Alex as says the, this. the soul right left as him. he's after he's been stabbed obviously the soul leaves and everything I kind of like that line I think it's it's a good line for a better situation that I'd they could have been in well you mentioned this I have another question how come okay how come assistant DA Barba mm-hmm can get shot like four times and stabbed like three times. He's a superhuman. And he keeps coming back and coming back and coming back and killing and killing and killing and, and grabbing the... And Dude, it feels like they all do, though. In this Except movie, for Alex damage. gets stabbed one That's time true. and he's and then I can't believe that guy left me. I don't think he did because otherwise when you shot fucking the dude at the beginning, you would have been fucking gone. Yeah, I thought there was like a deception on the Bad Souls part to be like, you got me, like to deceive him. I did him. too. Just like well, we got to yeah. check with Sean like on this. Was there a longer in the, in the long <laughs> original ending did Alex get back up after being like four stabbed? times like Barba did yeah mm-hmm. like four times in the first five minutes no I think in the in the original one it's um Bug stabs Alex okay and so Alex is gone and the soul is gone and then I think Bug goes to leave the room and this is the point where Fang comes back in and then she's got a gun in your face and she's like who are you because she thinks like the soul oh, I killed, like that he's absorbed the soul I like soul. that. Yes. It's better. It's not great, but it's better. And and uh, he repeats a line from earlier. She's like, who are you? And he's like, uh, he says, look in the mirror. And then she fucking shoots him. And it cuts to black at that point. Like, she repeats the line back to him that she said to him earlier. Like, look in the mirror, Pug. Yeah. Like, look in the mirror, Fang. And she blows him away. And that's when it cuts to him walking down the street. With the rest uh, of the seven, and they all disappear. All, yeah. But he doesn't disappear, and that's the confusing thing about like that first, that uh, first setup in the ending that I saw. It's just like, well, all right, so what? Is he dead? Is he not? Like that was the confusing part of that. It I works like, better. I like her asking, "Who are you?" I like yes. her asking, "Who are you?" Yes. I like that. I like because I like that too. The who done it of if the soul is in you because soul jumping part of it. Like that's cool. That's interesting. That. Brings back and the kind of whodunit thing. Wouldn't the soul be in him? Yeah. Right. It, yeah, because it should be. I it mean, should be. It's like, what are the rules of the yes. of engagement in this movie? Yeah. Like, you yes. Know, and that's why it feels like it's playing fast and loose with it, probably right. because they made a Which lot is, of yeah, it up the, in whole, the, the whole time was just yeah. confusing because well, because of that reason. Why? There's no. They never explain why it has to be seven different people that connect all these souls, and not just. Like, but what do you need the the scroll at the beginning of the movie in the beginning? Of right, the seven, right, you know. right. If you're going to do that, why not just, just simplify have the it? This soul is too complicated. To jump into anybody, well, yeah, or have like, some mythology. I would say in the title, that, explain that like twenty five um, is too complicated. That like Cain yeah. and Abel had five other fucking brothers and sisters, right? Yeah, and yeah, why, that's why that would be why the dude's name is Abel or something like that. Yeah. Like, why can the disembodied souls jump into the mirrors to help out? Other I people when they need it's to. Not, he's just seeing it because they're in. But he got hand. handed the knife. Yeah, 
the knife can travel yeah, through they explained that in one, like, of the, in one of the series of X-Men. Oh, yeah. geez, okay, was, I must somebody, have missed it. Somebody God ran upstairs, it. put the knife they ran, in yeah. it. Yeah, they ran upstairs. Put it in there randomly. Yeah. But, at the same, <laughs> but, but he did not yeah. know that the Asian guy had drowned in the river. Yeah. And he saw him in the in the river, in right. the mirror. Right. Yeah, but, but he, but he couldn't put that together. The soul. Yeah. Yes, because so yes, the soul helps him create the condor. Sure. Yeah. The soul is what... But what's her name? Penelope shows up in the third act to help him out. Oh, the Asian dude's a creative one. He's the creative one, and and so him. and because he died, uh, that's how he's able to create the condor. Okay, so who? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it all checks question. out. When Works all of a sudden, yeah. perfectly logical. When all of a sudden, he gets like his like showmanship on during the condor. That's the jocks. But he wasn't dead he's yet. Not dead. He's not dead, not dead, dead but he's yet. able to channel and pick well, up on we saw all that. seven. Because you see that throughout the movie that he's able to tap into the right. Stuff. So, That's so, the so t- him stupid. tapping, so him you, tapping into the jock at that point. For you're tell- I got it. Okay. You're telling I me. I, I'm not upset with you, Sean. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like I am. You did. You yell. You're like, all right, I got it. You're more like mad at the world than me, but you're just like, all right, I understand. So you're telling me the jocks. He tapped into the jock's soul to yell at the jock, so it's like yes. a circle of screaming between the jock and his own soul. Yeah, because exactly. he can yes. mirror people. As what seen the in that fuck? weird scene where he mirrors. But he out. taps into the guy to yell at that guy. But yeah. also, but, the, the jock was never that articulate. Exactly, like it was, yeah. Like, the only time he was was during the presentation Yeah, the which was, was yeah. like a different character almost. Sure. That's, that's what I'm saying. The jock was like never that articulate, and all of a sudden he's up there like giving a presentation like it's fucking Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. <laughs> like, like screaming. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. all right. Like, like what? Yeah. <laughs> this is going on. It's the centerpiece of I was trying to think of, and and none of the people were dynamic enough to be like, oh, he's channeling this one now. No, mm-hmm. not at Except all. Except right. it was like obviously like Britney's voice, yeah, right, right. Or, or like the, or a, a woman's Penelope's, voice. It was right. Penelope. Was we were talking about God. Through. It was that, that, because that, that was the her only personality trait was religion. But yeah. all, the, all the other ones. Turn on the prayer like, conditioning. I was like, all right, he's <laughs> one of the girls. He's Turn on one the of the guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Prayer conditioning, man. That's yeah. The all end all line of that one. All right. Well, we should probably Ooh. wrap up our because otherwise we'll just of, keep asking oh, yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah, you're just asking why. I gotta keep like like oddly grilling Sean about <laughs> yeah. the movie. That's like, right. You brought it, so you should have <laughs> yeah, done the research. Your no, fault. I'm just like pointing at you with my fist. Like, hey, plus like, he has right. seen the complete version. How about of this. this one? Get me Asshole. this one here. I need he, answers. You went to a screening, so you brought this on yourself, man. That's right. You know? You're the expert of all things my soul to take. So mm-hmm. here's what we're going to do, listener. We are going to go around the room and give a review, each one of us, about my soul to take. And uh, But before then, we're going to do like this magical thing where we're going to answer some of your mail. So first of all, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got hey, a condor buddy. costume on. He does. Watch how he's going to spit. Doesn't look nearly as cool as the one in the movie, but. He's going to spit. He's doing his best. He's going to like he's going to puke and then it's shit all come, over everything. Yeah, it's going to come through that blowhole yeah. on his forehead. Yeah, the I like the did way shit on things. That they made the impression or the implied that the condor shit actually smelled like shit. Right. Like so he like, loaded yeah, the yeah. costume in, up with but in actual your head, shit. You know it's just like diet coke or yeah. something. Right. Sick of Mentos yeah, but in he that. was actually sick after he, the jock persona left him and he was like whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cuz it smelled so bad. Like, just like he was so overtaken with like emotion after channeling that and right, and I think that was more yeah. Oh yeah, you don't think yeah. it was the smell of the because all the girls are reacting like. Grrr. I think it's because they don't know what this liquid is. like. <laughs> let's put it this a way: mystery liquid. Being like the rest of the movie, they don't make it clear. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. They don't make a decision to like continue with the mail. Tell you continue that. with the mail. <laughs> all right. Well, let's ask this question: How can people get a hold of us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. What about on Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. Uh, uh, by email? Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope that you'll write in. And hey, also, we didn't mention this before, but maybe you should go ahead and hit the subscribe, the like button, or give us a star rating oh, please uh, wherever that you found us, because that'll help us be found by more people uh, like yourself. I'm glad that uh, we have separated the elements of the social media where you can contact us because other than the one I know, I don't remember any. Of I had to so really I'm think to remember Holly's. I really had to think because I'm just like, I don't know the Facebook or the email. <laughs> All right, so uh, finding Colin Milligan. Milligan right Hello. 
I don't Hi. think we have we heard from. Him? We have before. We have? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Welcome back. Well, he made a, a he put a post up on Instagram. It says, "I don't always work overnight, but when I do, I listen to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast." Yeah, that's oh, great. Thanks. That's great. And he was also eating a Taco Bell in the photo. So We've thank you <laughs> very much for uh, listening to our show about our episode, "My Soul to Take." Andrew John writes in and says, "Confession time." Oh. Oh. I dig this movie. I always have. Ooh, what's that's, a, a, that's a hot take. So <laughs> we're gonna. Well, we're gonna ask the question that we should always ask. When's the last time you watched it? Yep. That's true. As he's hitting the unsubscribe button as he's listening <laughs> to this episode, <laughs> he's had to suffer through some horrible, horrible stuff. If you can't take it, then farewell. Uh, Mark Harrison writes in and says, uh, "So this was a film that a group of people made. That is all. Bravo, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, sir. Yeah." Uh, Amos, the accurate this one. movie exists. Amos Martinez writes in, writes in and says, I guess I have an off taste in horror, but I really love this movie. It had a lot of style and originality to it, plus the general feeling of just being off, of just being off that only Wes could really deliver. It's, it's off. Craven's yeah. last masterpiece with only Nightmare and Hills Have Eyes being superior to it. Rest in peace to one of my favorite directors. Rest in peace. Scream 4 sure. is all I have to say to that. Scream 4. Yeah, Masterpiece. I'm reading it. Is it right there? One I of believe his last, last Masterpieces. Uh, Zombie Brando writes in and says, what a shit movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he Get says, right to it. it's a shame because it could have at least been a campy good time. I feel like the subgenre Wes is stronger at the slasher genre and Scream and Nightmare being his two high points. So I had high hopes for this. But the movie is just cluttered with many too too many poorly written, unlikable characters and an overly complicated plot, really tame off screen kills, and some silly ass nonsensical twists. Yeah. Yeah, you dude, yep. you well, nailed it, man. You right nailed it. Yeah. Uh, Sean's just gonna read that again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, about our episode, which we did on Halloween 2018, Amos Martinez writes in and says, the movie was all right. It was better than I expected, but it was not that great. As a sequel to the first, I think Halloween 2 was miles better, but Season of the Witch is still the best. I See, that that's where you lose me, man. I was just saying, I was, everything happened to those last like five words. Was, I like uh, Season of the Witch. Am I the only person? But like, yes. how would you rank it amongst the... like? As they it, make more Halloween the the it goes higher on my list, but... Uh. Well, Amos says 100% honest. That's his uh, favorite of the se- favorite of the series with Halloween 2 closely That's behind it. I'm assuming, favorite of the series. I'm assuming wow. that you mean after, after the, the original one. Halloween. But <laughs> yeah, sure. we did okay. our rankings on that episode. So listen to that to find out mm. where that ranks for all of us. All right. Well, uh, no, no I watched it twice don't. in the past two weeks, dude. Yeah, no, terrible. you don't. Yeah, yeah no. I, wa- right. I mean, I watched them all twice. Well, in the past right. two weeks, yeah. But, yeah. Well, let's go around the room and find out how we each thought of tonight's movie, My Soul to Take. Colin! Starting with- Colin, what do you think about tonight's movie, 2010's My Soul to Take? Directed by Wes Craven, also written by Wes Craven. Go. I think it's a fascinating film, Sean. Fascinating. If nothing else. Well, it is. Okay, so that's true. It's fascinating. Um I think, again, somewhere along the line, I, I'm going on... It's a know, movie that should be forgotten. I'm going off the reservation, and it is interesting to me, uh, and again, I think I've identified right now, it's, it's Shocker and My Soul to Take, I think, are the most personal of uh, Wes Craven's movies. That being said, right, because if you want to get to know the, the guy who made these movies, then those two you should look at, because I think there is something there. However, I don't actually think you should watch this movie. I mean, it is. Yeah. I mean, even watching it tonight, I saw it. uh, I think, did I see it in the theater? It feels like I did. I didn't see it in 3D. but I saw it in the theater and was like, this is a fucking awful piece of shit movie. You know, he hadn't made a movie. I think it was in five. Was it long? It it was five. It was was cursed, wasn't it? Maybe it was like six years, five or six years. Yeah, Cursed was 2005. Yeah, well, he said, because I was looking up, like, why didn't he make a movie in that time? But he was producing the remakes of Last House on the Left and oh, Hills right. of Ice. So yeah, he, he was he, writing them. He was yeah, he was working, okay. but, you know. Um, yeah, and then he got excited about that. I think he also wrote a book at some point. Like, a, he did, like, a fictional, I can't remember. I think it was a horror story. I think he wrote a Music novel. of the Heart. I don't know. It wasn't like, yeah, I can't remember. But uh, the uh, yeah, this movie is just... I, I like I admire the fact that it is it's I think that it is creative. He's showing this kind of like uh 
enthusiasm. You know, you can you can almost feel it when you're watching the movie. He's very enthusiastic about it. It's brimming with, I think, what he thinks are these are ideas and things from his own life that he's kind of putting into this film. And uh, maybe he's creating the new Freddy Krueger. You know, with if the nothing Riverton, else, he's interested. Or Riverton, yeah, he's very interested, he's interested in this. But man, it. I mean, I just sit there going like, this movie is a fucking colossal train wreck. I mean, it really does call into question, like, you know, the the things that you like about, you know, his earlier movies is like unrestrained. It's what, you know, where is Wes Craven? What is his strong points? What are he, is he good at? Because clearly, like, you know, characterization and not really uh, being able to, you know, get compelling performances out of actors casting correctly, you know, like all across the board, this movie's just a disaster. I mean, it's a disaster. Um, <laughs> was there any memorable score in this movie? Like, no, it's Marco Beltrami. And I there sat there. I, I, oh, I, I, I don't remember music problem. in the movie. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember no. music in the movie. I remember the, st- well, the I remember needle the- drops. There was a couple needle drops of okay. like, what's of, well, yeah, this remember, of the soundtrack, not the soundtrack, score. So. Oh, okay. But I remember, I mean, I was actually sitting there listening to yeah. like what he was doing at some points. And the only thing that I could do like for some reason, you know, I was like, I was, I was empathizing with the Marco Beltrami experience as he's sitting there trying to make some kind of sense. Oh of this shit! Movie. Could you imagine having to score this movie? Oh, yeah. Well, this is when I made. You know, it's like film composers are brought in, and it's like, here's the movie you signed on because you read a script or whatever a while ago. Mm, yeah. He said, "Yeah, I've worked with Wes on like a bunch of movies. Sure, so I'm going to sit down and do this one." And then it's like, you see the movie, and you're like how in the fuck am I supposed to make any kind of sense musically out of what's happening here on the screen? And I felt bad for the guy. You know, I mean, I felt bad for, like, everybody that's, who worked on it. That's, <clears throat> you're doing a lot if you feel bad for Marco Beltrami. Yeah, yeah. And the actors, like, you got to do this. Like, but why? I mean, it was just... Uh, <laughs> but why? 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 Yeah. It's, uh, it's a terrible, terrible movie. But, like I said, it's of interest. Uh, I think if you're a fan of Wes Craven... Uh, then you should probably see it. I'm not recommending it to anybody else. I mean, I'm talking about diehards. Completionists. Completionists yeah, only. That's, uh, that's everybody else should, uh, you know, avoid like the plague. It's a terrible, <laughs> like terrible, you, like you terrible did when movie. it came out. Yeah, yeah. It, you already skipped it. That's right. You made a smarter decision already. So uh, that's uh, no go on my soul to take, Brandon. Brandon Lutmer here. <laughs> Um, uh, seven time freak show uh, attendee. Seven time uh, zero freak picks, show attendee. By no the way. picks yet. <laughs> I'm still hoping for it. Praying like hell. Um, this movie came out in 2010, not 1996. Like it right, feels like. and it's not. It doesn't seem as relevant as scary as legitimate. The CG not is not as good as as like. Urban legend, or like I know what you did last summer, or just like whatever popcorn bullshit horror movies were like the early two thousands. All better, movies. and they're all better than this one that came out not that long ago. Mm-hmm. I was living on my own as an adult when this movie was released. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that's crazy. It's like you know what's a better movie than this? Jeepers Creepers two. How? Okay. I'm going to agree with that. Yeah, and Jeepers Creepers 2 is like, yeah. like, thir- like somehow like 38 no, least, minutes at least long. At has got Ray Wise. <laughs> yeah. No, it has some like, good scenes. It does. You know what movie makes more sense in this movie? Blue Velvet. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I can track Blue Velvet. Yeah. Oh, I can't yeah. track this movie. So. Yeah. Like even, you know what it's bad when Lynch can bring you back around? Yeah, you're right. And, and, yeah. and not Wes Craven in this movie. It's just... No, there's no point. Uh, listener, don't bother. There's no point. It's not It's not campy enough to be fun. It's not, um, despite all the exposition, there's not enough of a backstory for it to uh, be like a cool mythological anything behind it. There's nothing to grasp for, except for, I don't know enough about Wes Craven's personal life to know if it's, to dive in deep on like Colin, as far as that goes, but no, ain't worth your time. Mm-hmm. Just go to bed, or <laughs> you could be oh, coloring. You could be coloring. Yeah, you, yeah. you, yeah. you, you could be coloring. You could be coloring instead of doing yeah. this. You catch up on some sleep, or watch Law and Order. Or you could watch Law and Order, or yeah. Live PD <laughs> or an infomercial. Yeah. Ronco, <laughs> yeah. forget it, man. Michaela. 
Uh, I can honestly say I've never seen a movie like this before. Like I've never Dude, seen a movie that, that was. That's what I'm saying. As, <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. I'm saying that. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's completely incomprehensible, and I don't understand what the end goal was here, or like if it was like I I think Colin, you might be right with like attaching that dangerous term of passion project to this because you know that's the kiss of death for a good movie is if it becomes your passion project, you get too blinded by your love for it, and it becomes a mess. Or like and, a new Hudson Hawk. Yeah, Hudson Hawk, Hudson nothing Hawk. but trouble. You know, Although the uh, the opposite rule to that would be Shape of Water. Uh, yeah, I, shit like that mm, one's best picture. Yeah, I, I, yeah all I of his know. movies I are mean, passion except projects. For that yeah, the rule. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, right, that's, yeah. that's Colin's got a good point. Go. Is there a Del Toro movie that's not a passion project? You know, like <laughs> yeah, you know. Sure but I mean, usually well, passion yeah, projects. Blade yeah. Two. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was yeah. just going to throw it out there, but I got it. But, yeah, I'm sorry, no, it when you're a director, it's a lot easier to make your passion project, but like like Hudson Hawk or even Nothing But Trouble, those are actors trying to make their passion yeah. projects. So like that's when it really, really goes wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, Nobody I, likes oh, that we, movie. We've all talked about, at length about how much we hate that movie. Oh, next week. Oh, God, Don't Holly, you please dare. Please don't let me down, Holly. <laughs> um, this movie, yeah, it's. I, I, I have a way you can fix it, though. Let Kevin Williamson write this movie. Just Wes Craven, take Maybe. your ideas and take your basic bullet points and just but give it to that, Kevin Williamson. Then you get and cursed like, because somebody else comes in and fucks with it. That mm-hmm. studio coming in and fucking with it is. But the, this was, like was a, this wasn't a wine scene movie, right? Three. No, it wasn't actually. That was I was thinking that. That's true. If it's a passion project, right. how come the Weinstein's didn't pay for it since they had done all the screams and uh, curse? Did they do Red Eye? I they did know. curse. Yeah. I don't know if they did Red Eye. Was that a dimension and, uh, one? And they did Probably Music of the Heart. Dimension one. But, yeah, okay. right? I mean, it was like so. he was, yeah. But okay, it, it, anyways, you know, Wes Craven and Kevin Williams and Prince Money. It always, it, if nothing else, it would have been a box office success, and this wasn't. So it, it could only go up the way I see it is bringing Kevin Williamson in. He doesn't need to completely write it, but let him do a treatment of your script, Wes Craven. Let him look it over and do some fucking studio notes, you know? Like, that's a, do something because actually, like, I know he gets a lot of shit for writing the same thing over and over again, but he has a good handle on how to write teenagers. And I don't think anything has ever made that more evident than this movie. Well, Wes Craven's handle on teenagers is tenuous at best. Like, it's, it's n- not good. Um, I I know when we did Cursed, I really went to bat for that movie, and now I feel like we all need to reevaluate <laughs> Cursed because it can get so much worse than that movie. And I have more appreciation for Scream 4. Um, people under the stairs like that movie's still such an outlier from all of his other ones. I don't even know if I can p- compare it to this, but this movie's it. Like we could just keep asking questions for days with this movie, but don't don't watch it. Keep avoiding it. You're not missing anything. There's not there's not even like a good like ooh that's like this this huge actor that broke out later on in an early role. You don't even get that with this. Uh, even, Frank Grillo, or even like there was not any. But the purge, you can watch. It, yeah, yeah, but he didn't like quote unquote break Michonne. out. No, but you could watch the Purge Anarchy and see a way better version of Frank Grillo. Well, and, yeah, but you that's know? after he broke out. I don't and he was know. the wheel man and whatever uh, he was uh, crossbones and there was Captain also no America. no like crossbones was after he was in Purdue. there also Anarchy. wasn't like yeah the plot wasn't that good but the kills were tight yeah like, there, there was nothing like yeah, there's no that. like nugget of anything making any yeah. of it worthwhile there's no good set piece there's not there's really. the condor in the classroom that's all I got yeah, yeah but, but that's in the trailer so one thing that doesn't involve a kill yeah like, mm. it's there it's good for other reasons I will say the the end titles were really cool they had some really nice like motion comic like end titles that were going by. That were really cool, Cooler actually. Than the movie yes. deserved. Yeah, it's just like, oh, okay, you spent your money on this. They were like really elaborate and really detailed motion and comics. It was 3D. awesome. I, I liked how they made the uh, the killer's knife turn into the condor because that's kind of what it looked mm-hmm. like to begin with. Mm-hmm. Which was, you know, it was yeah. cool. Yeah, sure. hard, hard sure. pass, hard pass, Sean. <laughs> hard pass, hard, hard, hard pass. pass. Um, it uh, my soul to take. It is uh, like Colin said, it's a fascinating movie. I brought it here tonight because it's been it's been a thing. Uh, apparently, it's been a thing for me over like you know the eight years since. It, God, it feels like so yeah, long. You sound like a fan of this movie. <laughs> no, maybe I do. Um, but it's it's you've been seen a, it like how many times? This is Four. probably the fourth time. Yeah, yeah. it's the more movie. than anyone's ever seen it, <laughs> including agree, Wes Craven. Like, I love Apollo thirteen, and I've only seen it three times. <laughs> Um, I, but when things get stuck, uh, sometimes things get stuck in my head and they become a curiosity for me. Um, and so like, I will, uh, I'll keep going back to them until I absolutely figure out what it is for me or what, 
or, or like I'll have that final viewing where it's just like, all right, I got it, I figured it out, I'm done with it. You might I know be, what it you is. Maybe coming this, back to this well for not, a while. This well, but this is I. This was it tonight. And okay, usually, okay. And no, you figured no, it out tonight. I, no, I figured it out tonight. No, I got it now. Because, um, but that's what uh, that's what I use the free show as. It's just like this is kind of like at I'm, the expense of all of us. It is, and it is. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, sorry, sure, and sure. I, 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 You're I not want to sorry. Don't lie. You just wait till I get my pick. Right. I wanted to apologize at the beginning of this episode and be like, I'm sorry, I brought this to all of you, but I do bring movies here to like. This is the the final frontier for some of these things. You like, like to put your feet up and treat us like a therapist yeah, with these movies. Like, well, I need. I have thoughts about this, and I need to know what everybody else <laughs> I need thinks. To work so through that this. I can figure it out for myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get another Shay Well, I also like. The fact that, like, instead of going after, because I, I appreciate this about the free show, we don't go after like a famous person's best work. No, no, you know no, that. No, 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 no. You yeah. know that very well. We no. go after the like. Well, what what more can we say about yeah. you know right, someone's yeah. best We're work that bring, you I'm haven't heard? Bring Halloween yeah. to this mm-hmm. show because like, oof, why would you do something like that? Mm-hmm. No, you got to bring the just the weird shit and be mm-hmm. like, they also made this movie. Mm-hmm. What does this say about them? Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, why. Don't, and then they, don't bring Lord of the Rings. Bring Meet the Feebles. <laughs> right. Bad taste. Bad taste. Or fucking and frighteners and shit mm-hmm. and yeah that's the movies we got to bring to this and try and figure them out and uh i i think we figured it out tonight with my soul to take <laughs> um again it, it is it's fascinating in in looking at a movie that just fails on every single level like i don't you can't fault the cinematographer this, how, she did okay whenever well, i watch sure. the movies over here i never want to like be like mystery science theater and like talk and joke about it during the thing but there was like six times tonight where I'm like guys you're with me here right, right yeah. this is terrible yeah. <laughs> they've been talking for 20 minutes um it is uh yeah it's uh I, I it like we said earlier, it's I, I can't believe that Wes Craven made this movie. <laughs> that, and that's exactly what I said about the people under the stairs. I could not believe he made that. Like and this every- is the complete, like, the same feeling, but opposite end of the spectrum, you know? Yeah. Like, like You guys like- haven't even seen The Hills Have Eyes 2. I mean, no, no I haven't. No. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> one day. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Colin's going to bring it out. <laughs> but it feels, it's so inept. It's so, I mean, you can say what you want about like. The hills st- still have eyes. Studio. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the, the hills not, have two not eyes. Not the modern one, the, the old, the like, 86 right, yeah. Hills of Eyes yeah. 2. Yeah. Um, you can say what you want about studio intervention, but I, I think this was probably like not good from the get go. Um,. I figured it out tonight. I don't. Uh, this is the final say on my soul to take is I don't recommend it. It is it's very bad. It's it feels inept. It's not written well. It's not uh, the editing. I mean, they had reshoots and tons of shit. Like there are other parts of this movie. If you happen to own or somehow go to this movie, despite what we're telling you not to do tonight, three ninety nine on Amazon. For, yeah. But no, it's like a Blu-ray. Like in the, there's alternate openings and endings to this. Like it, that's the curiosity as to what this movie sure. maybe I, could have been, but was probably never going to be. But there is, and there are more interesting parts to this movie that don't exist in the cut we saw tonight. Because even I, we got to the end of this movie for me, and I was just like, mm, all right, didn't remember that one. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't think anybody. I, I can't in any way recommend my soul to take twenty five eight. Um, uh, the curiosity is dead. Well, all right, it's done. That so, sounds pretty uh, definitive. I think it's definitive. I think we're done with my soul to take. The hills have eyes too. Perfect vision. <laughs> there you go. Twenty twenty. <laughs> we're done. All right, yeah, it's, yeah, it's no. over. It's done. Uh, sorry. All right, well, uh, so that means that next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly? Holly, Holly where are you at? Oh, Holly, she's not here. Holly, what are we watching this <laughs> Oh, way? I thought it was my turn. No. <laughs> oh. her, her soul's going to jump nope. into you, Sean, and then she'll tell and you. Jump into Brandon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it's uh, I'm going to tell you what it is. She's jumping oh, into, uh, yeah, it's the Miami Connection. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, I got some studying to do for this one. Why? What do you have to do? I made a promise that I would it's perform a monologue from this bad. movie. An awful, awful movie that's uh, hilarious. It's amazing. Yep. I, so, I don't know what any anything about. I know. Oh. Just go oh, in you're blind. In for a treat. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, awesome. You're so, in for a treat. Fun. Tune in next week for that Miami Connection on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>